Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a very brief introduction here. This is Brandon Mukagawa from the School of Biological Sciences, and Brandon's talk is entitled Bees and Parasitic Mites, colon, Can We Pivot from Pesticides? And uh, I have a clicker here that you might need, so I'll leave it on the... All right, here's Brandon. So imagine what you had for dinner last night. Maybe you had some hearty veggies or succulent fruits, but did you know that one out of every three pieces of American produce are pollinated by honeybees? These important pollinators, however, are currently under threat from a parasitic mite called Varroa destructor. These mites crawl up onto honeybees, feeding on their fat reserves, making them more susceptible to other stressors and harbor deadly viruses. As a result, beekeepers regularly apply pesticide treatments to their colonies to protect them from these mites. However, the repeated use of this over time has led to the evolution of pesticide resistance in varroa destructor, meaning the effectiveness of these treatments is decreasing over time. But not all bees are exposed to these chemical treatments. Out in the wild, bees live without human intervention alongside these mites. But how is this possible? My research is focused on comparing the hygienic behavior of these wild and managed bees in order to test whether these wild bees have increased levels of hygienic behavior, allowing them to tolerate these mites without pesticide application. Now, hygienic behavior might hit close to home during this pandemic. Just as we wash our hands to get rid of deadly germs and viruses, honeybees can groom themselves, using their legs to brush off any mites that might be feeding on them. And like we can collaborate within our community by wearing face masks and socially distancing ourselves from potentially infected individuals, Honeybees can help groom each other, as well as remove dead and infected individuals away from the colony to mitigate infection risk. Now, interestingly enough, we haven't found any differences between the hygienic behavior of these wild and managed bees. They, remove, they have similar rates of self-grooming, remove similar number of mite legs in the grooming process, and have similar dead larval removal rates from the colony. So how these wild bees are able to tolerate mites without pesticides is still a mystery. But I have found that both wild and managed bees tend to bite off mite front legs more often than other mite legs. And these mite front legs house important odor sensing organs that allow the mites to orientate themselves, navigate the colony, and time their reproduction. So colonies that preferentially bite these mite front legs can more effectively tolerate mite infestations. This highlights the importance of conducting further research into the behavior and ecology of these wild bees so we can pivot away from pesticides. As we've seen with the development of pesticide resistance in Varroa destructor, applying chemical after chemical after chemical is not a sustainable and long-term solution. The answer lies in these wild bees. Thank you.